CMB calling algorithm, in particular HMM, CVS, and rank segmentation. So what is the objective of the calling algorithm? It's basically, once you have a bunch of points like this, what are the regions of the genome that are gained or lost? So the HMM approach to this um, question is given the, the idea behind the markup model is that there are a set of hidden truths that are covered, uh, but you don't see them, they're hidden, but you see noisy observations. So um, what are the truths in copy number uh, estimation? Well, the truth is that there are integer states, zero copy, one copy, two copy, et cetera. And uh, you're making measurements, noisy measurements, and based on these noisy measurements, you're trying to stay at that at the particular point, which state is the right one, most likely probability that is a one copy state to so forth. Um, and um, of course switching from a state to another state, there's a history in there. So if you switch from one state to another state, you pay, pay a penalty to do that. So HMMs are usually drawn up as what's called a state diagram. So these are the different copy number states that you can define. So from zero to four, let's say. And then you can associate probabilities of how um, how likely is it to transition from a zero state to a two state or from a deployed state to a one copy state. And typically coming up with these probabilities are done using a training algorithm that uh, use some data set to, to do that. Um, so an HMM pretty much kind of makes observations that this, okay, at, at a particular point going forward and going backwards across the genome, it builds up as it gets these observations, what probability, how likely is it that it should be in a, a positive or one copy gain state or a lost state, et cetera. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of HMM? The big advantage of HMMs are they're computationally quite efficient. Uh, they're linear, so uh, the larger the array, um, it's just a linear step up in computation. So they can work quite uh, well with high density arrays. Um, and if you have well-defined integer copy number present in your data and your training set matches up what you will um, use on a daily basis, uh, then they work quite well. On the other hand, the disadvantage is that usually, well, some of these truths might not be, like the integer copy numbers are not real for, for cancer cases for the most part, so it wouldn't work on that. And um, you, you can't really change platforms or even densities without doing training. So another algorithm was, was created and very popular called circular binary segmentation. And the idea behind CBS is to chop up the genome into um, segments. And the way it does that, it takes one segment and it compares the distribution of the probes within that segment against its neighbors and says, hmm, do, do these segments look any different from each other? If it is, then it segments that, that out. If not, it continues to uh, continuously um, segment the, the genome. So here it compares this group to this group. With a certain p-value, it decides that, yes, it's significantly different or not. At the end of that process, it creates individual segments. So here's one segment that I'm drawing with this black line, the median of the probe, and another segment, segment here. So once CBS has gone through and chopped up the, the genome into segments where the distribution of the probes are different from its neighbors, then you can specify a certain cutoff. Um, for gain and loss. So here, this dashed blue line is the copy number gain. So if a segment is above that, that gain cutoff, it becomes, so here's a gain. And if a segment is below this uh, loss threshold, then this segment becomes a loss. Um, so the pros and cons of CBS, the advantages, the same algorithm can be applied to different, so there's no training. Um, it's based on the statistics of the data that you have. So the noisy arrays, uh, in fact, you don't need to adjust things. Um, the p-value is what stays constant. 
Um, and it has been demonstrated to work quite well um, compared to other methods. Uh, the big disadvantage for CBS is, is computationally intense. It's very demanding and uh, it's worse with higher density arrays. And uh, the other thing is you have to set parameters. So you can't train it. Uh, you have to say where the cutoffs are and what significant threshold you want to use. Now, rank segmentation is based on CBS. This is something that by discovery has developed incorporated into um, Nexus copy number. And the difference is instead of using the absolute value, we use the rank of the probe. So it's more robust to outliers. It also has this uh, great advantage that it has a close statistical uh, test. So you, the computation becomes much more efficient. You don't have to do permutation testing for the p-value calculation. So it's much faster. Um, so with rank segmentation, there are two sets of key parameters. The most important is the significance threshold. So this controls how many segments uh, you end up with, um, how significant they have to be before it separates, and then the threshold for making gain and loss calls. So this is the end of the, the basic CME calling, and I would like to now show you um, some of the principles in a live presentation. So here's a sample of an Agilent 105K array, and uh, we are going to process it using the rank segmentation algorithm. So if you look at that just down here on the rank segmentation, the significant threshold is 5 to minus 6, and the cutoff for the one copy gain of loss are 0.2 and minus 0.23. So let's uh, click view and have the software make that ca calculation. And we can bring up this sample to look at it in detail. So you can see that the areas of loss are marked by these red bars. So there's quite a bit of loss. And then chromosome 21 has a gain. Now, uh, if you look at the whole genome probe, that's based on the, the genome getting segmented into these little segments where the black lines are, and then the cutoff makes the call. So in particular, let's look at chromosome 12. And um, let me just focus on the PR for a second. Let me make this a little zoom in around here. So what the segmentation has done is, as you can see, it says, well, this segment here, this big segment here with lots of probes, is significantly different distribution of probes than the segment to the left and the segment to the right, similar with this guy. So the distribution of these probes is different than these neighbors. So it went through with 5 e to the minus 6 level of confidence and cut up the genome into these um, sections. Now, if any of these segments were greater, I mean, below the red line, that would have been a loss. If it was greater than this blue line, it would have been a gain, but it never made that threshold, so nothing happened even though uh, the genome got segmented out. Now, on, on the Q-arm, if we zoom around here, um, similar segmentation took place, but this segment here end up being below the, the red bar, uh, the red cutoff which is a single copy loss. So that indicates a loss there, another one here. And you can see this one just missed the, the threshold. So if you were interested in saying, well, this is, you know, I want to make a call for that. This is a, a loss that I want this to have indicated. Um, the, a very quick and simple way of doing that would be um, let's just do it here. Change the settings. So instead of using minus 0.23, let's say minus 1.8. So you're telling the software that I'm willing to take anything that's less than minus 0.18 as the median probe to call that a lot. And I'm going to reset this sample and click view. So let's go back to the chromosome 12. And now you can see that, that that's being called a deletion. 
And in fact, these other two flanking areas here also met that threshold. And this whole area is called a deletion. Even though there are three segments, the whole region uh, is a single deletion. So that's the effect of moving the, the threshold. So no segmentation. Uh, all these segments before are still as, as they were. But let's make another change here. So this one was 1 e to the minus sorry, 5 e to the minus 6. And I'm going to use this just to keep track of, uh, I'm going to duplicate that sample and just to show you the effect of how important it is to that significant threshold. So if I change the significant threshold from 5 e to the minus 6 to 0.05, and now process that sample with the same cutoff. Um, you can see, let's go back to chromosome 12. This we've been looking at this. And, uh, and let's look at the P-arm again to start with. You end up with all of these small segments because uh, with a significance of 0.05, yeah, this is different than this one. Oh, yeah, this is different than that one. You made it very lenient as far as the segmentation. Um, so it all got segmented out. And then the threshold was moved low. So these guys are now starting to make random calls of, of losses. And you can see how bad it is on this side. Um, we can push it the other direction. So let's go into the data set, duplicate this, and change the setting into the 0.05. Let's make it 1 e to the minus 9. So a lot more. It needs to have a lot more confidence before it's segmenting things out. 1 e to the minus 9. And let me sort based on that. So you can see the first row is 1 e to the minus 9. Now, if I look at that area, um, you have fewer segments, so some of these are still separating out, but it's not as much as it was uh, certainly before. So hopefully that, that's clear. And uh, now 